what a terrible world, what a beautiful world, I mean, I think kind of sums up <laughs> the state of things to a certain degree. And I feel like uh, so much of the songs were written over a long period of time uh, in the last two, three or four years. And I feel like I've had these really high moments, amazing moments in my life and also witnessing sort of globally, but then also some really awful things or some challenges in my own life. And it seemed, it's a lyric in one of the songs, one of the last songs, you know, what a world, my God, what a world you have made here. What a terrible world, what a beautiful world, what a world you have made here. And that's sort of how I feel about the world right now. The sessions were really structured around um, it just just the five of us getting together in the studio and playing. And sometimes, often, the band didn't even hear demos, didn't really know what songs we would be recording. We just showed up, all sat together in the room, and just started, and I would throw some songs out there and we'd see what happens. So I feel like it is as, mu as much of a collaborative piece between the band as anything we've done, and a lot of the stuff was tracked live. So whereas I feel like The King is Dead was an exercise in restraint, this was sort of going back to our old ways of just, let's go over the top a little bit. Every record should be in some, in my mind, should be in some way conceptual, if it's, well, it would be overtly conceptual, like The Hazards of Love was. Or less so, you know, The King is Dead, I think of as being conceptual in that it, we have this idea going into it in a shape and a form that we wanted it to be and strove for that. This one we wanted, to, we were kind of trying to keep it concept free, at least initially, and let just come in without any kind of preconceived notions about what kind of final record this was going to look like and just make sure the songs were good, the songs were finished, make sure that we were happy with them, and then the ones that kind of cohered would, would naturally make a kind of nice, cohesive record, which making a good record is a concept in and of itself. I think that The King is Dead in particular was a response to the record that had come before it, Hazards of Love, and Hazards of Love itself was a response to The Crane Wife, I think was kind of taking some ideas from The Crane Wife and really just going all the way with it in kind of a crazy way. So I feel like all those three records sort of play off one another. And, and I mean, in the sense that we, this was the first record we'd done without you know, having a group of songs rehearsed, we go and record it and it's done. This was the first time we'd ever just kind of, you know, book time here and there, let, let the record reveal itself. No deadlines, no labels, you know, asking what we're doing, no management wondering when this record's gonna come out. We were just making music. And at the time I was just writing songs because I liked was enjoying writing songs. So in that sense, it, it's sort of reaction to the, the prior ones because it's just a way that we've never worked before. I think there's a, the song at the end, the last song is called a beginning song. And, um, and I feel like it took the kind of the biggest journey of any song on the record. And it started out as this idea and we recorded it in that very early stages of, of the process. And it became a thing, you know, it was just a song. And, it, there was, and I, liked the, I liked it, I liked the bones, I felt like it was there, but it just was not working in the form that it was. So I went back and, and, and stripped it back to just the voice and, and, the, and the, I played bazooki on it. And demoed it again, just like that, added a little bit to it, and then brought it to Tucker and said, I want it to be as much like this, of just a voice and an instrument as it can be, but with everybody on it. And so that, it was sort of this weird, you know, like play, play a shape kind of thing. It's like, how can we make this be a full experience and yet sound like a single voice? And I think, I think we got pretty, it's a weird thing to try to go for, but I think we got as close as we could. Definitely the, I think the publisher, because it's the editor, it, it's, um, it's a lot of work. And it's laborious. It's like having, it's like manual labor. It's like writing a book is like chopping wood and stacking it. And you have and all this wood and you know it has to be chopped and stacked over here and all you can do is just do it piece by piece. And having somebody kind of like, oh, the stack's not big enough, you know, yet yeah, it can be kind of stressful. Whereas, you know, music is, well, I've said this before, but it's like writing songs just mostly looks like unemployment. I mean, you're just sitting on a couch and staring into space, kind of strumming on a guitar. So in that sense, 
Writing books feels like a real job. Writing songs doesn't. <laughs>